Hello, my name's Tom Walker. Welcome to That'll Be The Day. In this podcast, I'm talking to a visually impaired singer-songwriter from Northern Ireland who has just released his first single. But before we hear from Joe Kenny, if you like the music at the start of this podcast, it's a track called That'll Be The Day by the Liverpool band The Vow. And as always, we'll be hearing from The Vow at the end of this podcast. Now, Joe Kenny is an accomplished musician. During the lockdown, Joe did the Joe shows on social media. And in fact, they're still happening. And some people might recall that I spoke to Joe about that here on That'll Be The Day just before Christmas. Well, Joe's music career has taken a significant step forward with his debut single, Chasing a Dream. And hopefully Joe is on the other end of this Zoom call now. Joe, how are you doing? I'm very good, Tom. How are you? I'm not so bad, thank you very much. And it occurs to me that you are, I think, the first person to appear twice on um, That Will Be The Day. So something major must have happened. um, And I think it's got something to do with a new single. Indeed, Tom. Yes, it does. Uh, since last I spoke, since last we spoke, rather. Um, yeah, I, 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 I grabbed the kind of the, the bull by the horns and I went and recorded myself, well, an EP and ahead of the release of that in September, I'm releasing my first single uh, in July. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And the single's called um, Chasing a Dream, is it? Yeah, Chasing a Dream. Yep, that's right. Does that describe what you've been doing, would you say? I think it it does, you know. It it it. I was. It's 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 just occurred to me that this song was the last of the seven that came. That actually, that well, that I wrote, and it, it sort of it came around one day after I'd sort of thought I'd finished everything else, and it sort of sums. It's like a summary. It sums up what this has all been about. This journey of deciding to go and record and uh, the whole process of writing the songs, and then finally chase, chasing it all the way through now to release and I mean, uploading. Let's be clear. I mean, you've got a career in in, in your own right, um, working for the Stroke Association in a pretty high profile job. Um, but would it be fair to say that, you know, if this single took off, if uh, you start to get some airplay, that maybe you might rethink your career or are you always going to be working for the Stroke Association or similar organisations? It always occurs to me, you hear people who, you know, if they won the lottery would say, oh, no, I carry on working. I have to be honest, no, if this ever got anywhere or went anywhere, I would uh, happily pursue a new career in music. It's Ever since I've been, I don't know, maybe a child, I don't know, I've always sort of dreamed of it in any way. And I suppose uh, as you become an adult and you sort of get real, as they say, and you, uh, you have to earn money, you have to go and uh, work. And I've sort of, maybe I sort of stepped away from that dream a bit. And now I've come back to it going, look, why not? It feels right now things seem to be happening in the right uh, way. So even if it's just that I end up recording this EP and a couple of people tell me that they like it, that's enough for me. But if it makes some money, even better. You say things seem to be happening in the right way. Uh, just talk us through what's happened since we last spoke. I think it was just before Christmas. Well, yeah, obviously it was, I think, yes. And we had lockdown then, didn't we? You know, in January, and we we're all confined to our houses and all the rest of it. And I, I think I decided the old cliche about that you only regret what you haven't done has been sort of weighing on my mind a lot. And I was always aware that I, I've never recorded and released my own music properly. I mean, as in you know, release it for sale and streaming, download all that stuff. So I decided, whilst we're all sat at home, and just how quickly and how in the blink of an eye, our, all our lives changed, didn't they, over the whole COVID pandemic? I mean, Absolutely. I think they just everything we knew changed. That brought to me in sharp focus that, you know, how um, life is short and you just got to get on and do things. Don't think about them, do them. Sort of fast forwarding on from then, I um, uh, I then looked around for, because obviously recording an EP and recording music is expensive business. There's no cheap way to do this. And if you want to do it properly, it's certainly not cheap. So I applied for funding uh, from the University of Atypical. It's an organization over here in Belfast in Northern Ireland. Uh, and they support artists with a disability to, you know, well, to do well, to pursue their art. Uh, so I, I, I applied to them for a bit of funding and I was successful, which was a, a tremendous start. <laughs> 
We'll, we'll ask about the recording process um, after we've heard the single. But before we uh, do that, I just want to ask you about the Joe show as well, because uh, I know during the lockdown, uh, on a Friday evening usually, um, you've been on social media um, performing your music. Um, just wanted to ask how that's been going, because whenever I've tuned in, there's a blizzard of reaction, um, and it seems that it's it's got more and more popular. Well, I, I think we've been blessed with this. It started as a, rea- as, as sort of as a reaction to the first lockdown back in March 2020 because we were all sort of stuck at home of a weekend. And we, we just thought we'd start it up. And, you know, it's just me singing in my living room and we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And more and more people join us each, each, each week. And we kept it going week after week for most of the year. And even though things have opened up now a little bit, we still do keep it going as often as I can. I mean, it's not every week, but it's certainly every couple of weeks. And it, it, it is, well, it's quite popular. I mean, it's, people seem to enjoy it. So I'm going to keep, I mean, I will keep it going as long as people seem to enjoy it, you know? Well, whenever I've watched you, Joe, there's been loads of reaction, lots of likes and comments. And, uh, and Louise, um, your partner, has been busy reading them out to you. Um, Oshin, your, uh, I think he's four, five-year-old son now, he's intervened a couple of times as well. So it's been a bit of a family show, but um, more seriously, it must have been a great platform for you. It, it, it was. It, it was just, it, it, it's the beauty of being able to sit at home, and, at home as a family and play music and then interact with people who are watching and in a very, in a very real way. And people just share, swap stories, tell jokes. You know, um, you know, there's a bit of banter there. There's a bit of, you know, people can put in fo- so- so- song requests. I, I do some of my own songs. Of course, then Oshin, yeah, he just sits and listens, and if he feels like adding something, he does, <laughs> and he does. <laughs> well, I, as I say, I've I've watched a few times. Often I'm out on a Friday or around at friends or whatever, but uh, um, up, during the full lockdown, I would often have a little sneaky preview and have a little look. And it, you know, it's great entertainment. And my friend Terry Sinclair um, has also done something similar as well. And I think you know a lot of us have appreciated the lengths that you guys have gone to um, to provide entertainment during what were difficult times for everybody. Um, during what we might consider to be normal times, you go out gigging as well, don't you, around Belfast and, and Northern Ireland. Is your plan to return to doing that? Yeah, I mean, for many, many years, I've been this day, you know, a, a gigging musician, you know, doing the bar scene in the local local venues. And yes, I, w- I would dearly love to get back to doing that because it's it's something I enjoy it's sort of my first love is playing live music I don't know when exactly that's going to start because over here in Northern Ireland the um, opening up from lockdowns it's been delayed a few times now in terms of live music but we'll get there in the end we will and we'll get back to doing that but it's 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 been an interesting thing I've never done live streaming online before uh, the COVID lockdown and it was I, I definitely don't want to sort of figure just to move on move on and forget about it i think i would like to keep doing it but certainly can't wait to get back to doing yeah, live music in the real world as well <laughs> well it's interesting touching wood um we do get back to normal um but yeah i mean like you i'd never done interviews on zoom uh before before the lockdown and and it's a completely well not an entirely new way of working for me because i've done down the line interviews with people Um, but I was totally obviously responsible for the technical side of it. And while I'm fairly technical, Zoom did present some challenges. And I'm guessing that live streaming presented you and Louise with a few challenges as well at first. It really did. When I think back on what we learned and what we had to learn, it's mind-blowing. We started off with just um, an iPhone, just sat on a tripod stand, and that's it, just uh, with a new streaming onto Facebook. And we just got added more and more technology. We, we, we were able to get the like, microphones and mixing desks involved and get the sound a bit more pro. And then we were able to multi-stream on different platforms. So we could like, we would go si- simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and all these different things. And it, it, it is mind blowing how much, and I know something we still don't know at all. There's, there's a lot more, I've seen people doing some stuff online, which is truly amazing. We've even started now doing, um, we're able to add guests into the stream now so we can you know, have somebody else coming in, playing a bit of music or talking. And it's, it's, it's really quite, it's, it's basically like a little TV show. It's, it's a, it is quite entertaining. The host with the most there, Joe. <laughs> well, well, if you haven't seen Joe on uh, social media, Facebook, etc., he's well worth looking up because uh, 
Uh, it's a it's a very handy way to spend an hour or two on a Friday or Saturday evening. Joe, OK, you better tell us about the single. Um, uh, just, you know, describe it from a musical point of view and and just give us a few more ideas as to what inspired you to to write it. OK, well, it's, as, I, as you said earlier, it's called Chasing a Dream. And it's, it's quite a sort of mid-tempo kind of tap your foot kind of kind of tune. I, that's what I was going for anyway. I hope I've achieved it. I want to keep it quite... I wanted to keep it quite true to to what I do, I suppose, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a live enter entertainer. So I didn't want to overdo it with too many overdubs and too many instruments and things. So you'll you, you'll hear it's quite it's quite simplistic, um, and yeah, it, it's just me and the guitar really with a couple of the bits and pieces. I'd finished the recording process of the other six songs that I have on the EP out in September. And this one came came to me in about ten minutes, and that's so rare with with the songwriting. Normally, you have to slave over it for weeks, even months, to get the right words and chords and things all in the right right order. This one came to me in ten minutes one 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 morning, and it's, it's it's as if it's my subconscious sort of summarizing what I did and presenting it to me in a you know, well, what was I doing? Well, I, I suppose I was chasing a dream, and so this is a <laughs> this song kind of reflects on that a bit, and the fact that you know. There's a line in it, it says, the man who made time made plenty. And I think I'm trying to say that like it's never too late. I think that's what I'm trying to get at with it. It's, it's, it's a kind of, um, don't be thinking that you're too old or it's too late or whatever to, to follow your dream or to do what you want to do. Just do it and, and then wonder about the whys and the wherefores afterwards, you know? Joe, have you ever fancied being a DJ? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, yeah, sure. Well, here's your chance to introduce your own record. Go for it. Well, thanks very much, Tom. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, my first, my debut single, if you like. It's called Chasing the Dream, and it's on now. You can get it from uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, any download service. Please enjoy Chasing the Dream. A lifetime searching I've already found it You sold yourself, but it's not enough Racing to find You've already got it You let the doubt cloud your mind It's a moment It's a word You feel it now Chasing a dream Is it still Stressing out about tomorrow isn't worth it. It's yesterday that pulls you back. It's a moment, it's a word. You feel it now. Chasing a dream, is it still? Over and over again 
Chasing a dream Is it still there? Going nowhere Breaking free Before it's too late How long do I wait? Chasing a dream Is it still there? That is Chasing a Dream by Joe Kenny. Now, Joe, you said it was a relatively simple song, but I know a lot of people listening to this will be interested in the mechanics of the recording process. And I bet it wasn't anything like as simple as you've led us to believe. So come on, tell us about the recording process. Um, give us a bit of detail how that works. It's it's truly, um, it's way more complicated than I, when I first started recording or anything, it's, it's, it, it never ceases to amaze me how long these things take. I mean, this took days and days to do the seven tracks. I mean, you imagine I have to go in, you go into the studio with nothing. There's nothing that the, the uh, guy who was recording didn't know anything about what I was going to do. So you have to sort of do a demo or a guide track to sort of show him what he has to, what, he, what, he, what he's going to be working with. You then have to worry about, um, you know, your beat or your drums or your percussion. Then you have to put down the main rhythm guitar tracks and then build that up a bit with bass or with a few bits of keyboards or extra guitars. And then the big kind of, the, the, the kind of icing on the cake then has to be, you know, the, the main vocal, the, the main, the main, the main um, voice, getting that right. And that can take forever. I mean, see, so trying to get yourself in tune and get the right words and get it the way you want it. It can take hours, quite honestly. And it did. <laughs> I mean, do you ever go in, or did you ever go into the studio and kind of think, well, I don't really feel like singing today, but I'm going to have to do this? Yeah, I, I, I did. I, I, and it did happen. And you have to kind of, hit a, well, apart from the fact you've, you have to have a word with yourself and go, well, like, you know, time is kind of money and that you don't want to waste money on not, not, not being productive. But there's ways I've learned in just trying to get, do yourself up a bit so you don't, you know, maybe make yourself feel a bit more positive or a bit more creative. Like, you know, you know, have a sing, turn some music on and just sing your head off at any old thing at all and might get the, it lifts your mood, it gets you a bit more feeling um, positive and up. Now for you as a blind person, uh, Joe, how accessible is the recording process? And were there any sort of visual impairment related challenges or difficulties that you just didn't anticipate? It's, it's, that's an interesting question because I used to have a recording studio myself many years ago uh, when I lived in Leeds. And we used to record using, um, well, just using JAWS with a with a with a computer running Windows, and it was extremely stressful because <laughs> there was there was there was lots of accessibility issues and things with software and whatever. But that's why, in this process that I've been through, I did go to somebody else's studio and let uh, and let him worry about the actual technical part of recording. And all I had to do is just be the um, just I had to just be the diva and just perform. But there's a couple of things, and I, I think the first one would probably be uh, see travel, get, getting to a studio when people just it, I think the people who are sighted think nothing of jumping in the car and just spinning around the country to wherever they need to go. Whereas I had to work around bus times and that kind of thing, and. Um, then even little things like, you know, um, sometimes when, when you're recording, a lot of things are done through gesture and looks and, you know, um, hand gestures and things, which obviously we couldn't do. Um, Declan had to actually uh, verbalise what he was thinking and tell me. <laughs> That's an interesting point, the hand gestures, Joe. I'd not thought of that in a studio context because in radio, there's a lot of hand gestures as well. And of course, the engineers have to come through the headphones and say, um, no, that isn't working or do this or do that. Yeah, totally. And it, it, I suppose it just takes us all to sort of stop and go, OK, let's uh, I, you can wave all you want, but I'll not see you do it. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll have to uh, you, you'll have to talk to me. But I think for me, the biggest learning curve has been 
I've obviously had to do the visual side of the marketing of this as well in terms of it, the artwork for the cover and the, you know, a, a, some video content for YouTube, etc. And that's been a challenge. That really has. I, I feel quite at home with the playing the music or singing or whatever, but uh, the video and the image side of the of the promotion has been quite difficult. And I, I've tortured my nearest and dearest with them. Um, you know, is that better in an uppercase or lowercase? What font is better? What colors? What contrast? And I think people are like, I think sick of it <laughs> by now. But I think we got there, and I'm very pleased with with uh, with the, with with the, with the result. But it's been an education, definitely. I mean, we have to rely on people with sight, sighted people, or uh, people who've got more sight than I've got, certainly, to tell us whether something looks good or looks right, don't we? And it's a lot of trust we're placing into other people. Oh, definitely. And it, it, this really showed me that, that, um, you know, you can say, okay, it'll do rightly or it'll be okay. But at the end of the day, everybody, other people who are re releasing music, it's all, like, people are taking such time and effort over this. And so you have to do the same. And if that means bringing in people, friends, family, or people that you trust, or even going paying for um, services that maybe other people would do themselves, you know, like everybody can probably sit at home with a laptop and work up a little bit of, you know, publishing, you know, in terms of uh, posters or putting text on images or something like that. Whereas I, I've had to source all that in terms of like, um, externally and get people who can do all that kind of thing. And did your partner Louise have to spend a lot of time then? I think she did from what you said, spend a lot of time just describing concepts and ideas to you. Yeah, oh, oh, totally. I mean, it's like you end up having these surreal conversations about, um, you know, foregrounds and backgrounds and um, is it posed or does it look natural? What way is my hand tilted? Is the guitar the right way around or is it sunny? Is it is it dark that day? Is it raining? All these kind of strange <laughs> things that people wouldn't even realise, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I've commissioned photography in the past when I had a full-time job. Um, and while I know what a good photograph is, I couldn't actually see whether it had uh, been taken. So I, I needed to rely on sighted people to, to look at the picture for me and say, yeah, that works, that doesn't work, you know. So I can fully understand where you're coming from. But I'm guessing that you and Louise are happy with what you've got now. Oh, yeah, I'm very happy. And um I'd say it's, it, it's really down to, you've got to be very methodical. Like as soon as I get, for example, a photo, a photograph that I'm happy with, well, you name that and you give it a, 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 a like a, you, you put a description in the title that you know, that you, so that you know where it, that that is the one. So it, out of the other 17, that that's, that's the one you want. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Joe, you and I work in surprisingly similar ways. That's exactly what I would do. I was looking through some photos the other day. And I was so grateful that I'd given them meaningful titles. Yeah, it's the only way for me. So I'll put a, a literal description, very short description, as the title. And as you say, if you come back in a couple of years or something, you'll like you'll hopefully know what it's all about. <laughs> what advice, Joe, would you give to other visually impaired people who, you know, are great musicians? They want to make a, a, an EP or a, a release a single. Um, you know, what advice would, would you give them, not in just in terms of, well, you know, chase a dream or chase your dream, but also the, the, the mechanics of doing it? What would you say to them? Well, first of all, I'd say don't be daunted by it because it is, it is a daunting thing. To, when, you, when you break it down into its component parts, there's a lot there in terms of writing the songs, learning the songs, booking studios, recording, promotion, marketing, even the mechanics of uploading the songs to digital distribution sites and all that. There's so much to it, but you break it into small parts and you just do it bit by bit. And then when you need, you know, when you need help, if you can source the help from, well, with friends or family, brilliant, but if it has to be external sources, then just do it. And it'll be worth it in the end because you end up with a, 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 you know, like a professional product that you can then sell. And that, that was the thing for me. It was having a product that I can now go anywhere with and put it in front of anyone and go like, that's what I do. That's what I sound like. That's what I look like. The other thing I would also say would be um, social media is everything. It's, we've got such, there's such power in how you can sell yourself and promote yourself on social media, but it, it takes a lot of time and energy. Um, I've seen myself like most evenings sat there just and 
you know, we are updating your bio on Instagram or, or looking at TikTok or Twitter or YouTube, but do it and it'll be, and that's, you know, that's how people find you. And then once you get a bit of an audience, well, then all you've got to do is just record some product and get it out there. He says, all, I made that sound rather easy there, all, all you've got to do. But, you know, if that's what you want to do and, and that's, that's what your dream is, then, you know, break it down into its parts and do it. I'll tell you what, Joe, the performers of 30 or 40 years ago had it easy compared with these days, didn't they? <laughs> well, I was thinking that the other day myself. I was like, I would love a record label just to go, yeah, you're signed. We'll do all that. And you just, you just sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Joe, I mean, good luck with that. I mean, it, uh, you know, Chasing a Dream is a great record. And, you know, I'm really hoping it does everything you want it to do. And I uh, hope this podcast helps in a small way to do that as well. So thank you once again for a second time. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for the opportunity to come on and talk about it. And uh, uh, all, all, uh, all, uh, all the best. And uh, hopefully we'll chat again soon. You might be on for a third time yet. You never know. <laughs> Joe Kenny, thanks very much indeed. Well, as you heard, Joe's had his chance to be a DJ. Now it's my turn. This is The Vow with Holy Roller. Holy roller with God on your side Your redeemer, your strength and your guide Through the memories which plague all our minds You walked in hell's fires a solitary soul without a prayer And spat on those liars Who told us how the meek would claim the earth We praise you on high Your spirit and your Yeah.